You're listening to Improving Business, where personal and business finance take a front row seat. I'm Brandon. Hello, this is Rick. And today we'll be talking about thinking big in a world that is getting smaller. And smaller. It's It's a small small world. (laughs) (laughs) Whether you're an employee looking to start your own business, someone between jobs, or a business owner, the real question is, do you dream small? Or do you dream large? Or do you dream at all? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just keep your head down. Ambien, make sure I don't dream at all. That's right. No sleepwalking like your brothers do. No. <laughs> Someone that has been known for dreaming big, maybe one of the biggest dreamers uh, ever, mm-hmm. is Walt Disney. Mm-hmm. And he took a lot of big steps that uh, to other people look like leaps. And we talked a little bit about Walt Disney and core competency before, Mm -hmm. but uh, the guy's so prolific that we had to go back to him. Yes. So before, we were talking about his overall strategy, but this time we're going to be talking about specifics and things that happened in his company uh, that were behind the scenes that most people don't know. Uh, My wife and I were just watching this special on the Walt Disney story, And it was pretty amazing on what that company went through to get to where they are today. We'll also be connecting this individual story of Walt Disney with the book by Jim Collins, Build to Last, Successful Habits of Visionary Companies, uh, which has tips in it uh, for Mm -hmm. thinking big. So the creation of Disney goes way, way back. You know, it goes into the 20s. Uh, as a young man, an animator who loved to draw. And what was amazing is that how he made the leap from just being a cartoon animator or having a company that's a cartoon animator and moving it into a company that does features but happen to be animated. So his first big jump into this was in 1934, Snow White. Before this time, cartoons were really just things that played before movies, right? right? You would you would have a little uh, bunch of little gaggy cartoons where you know people were jumping on trampolines, hitting their heads, and uh, then you would see you know Bridge Over the River Kwai or whatever, right? Right. Whatever you were watching. It was so amazing about this biography is that Felix the Cat was one of the number one animated cartoons back at this time. I remember Felix the Cat. <laughs> He's know. on top of that car dealership near USC. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you remember the, the animated cartoons? That, did you have yeah, them Yeah, I think I, well, not in my time, but, uh, oh. but I think I did buy an old DVD that was like Popeye cartoons and uh-huh. Felix, for like a dollar at Target uh-huh. and yeah. watch those. I know. See, I used to watch uh, Felix the Cat in the 60s. I thought that was great. You used to go things like, you know, the master cylinder. I, the master soda? No, the master cylinder. Oh. That was I, the name of the, the, uh, his nemesis. <laughs> it was a cylinder? Well, he looked like actually the master cylinder from a car, but he was a bad guy. Oh. <laughs> Cartoons were weird. They're still weird, but that's weird. <laughs> so Disney decided to take the next step, or as many saw the leap, on making an animated feature. And it was not going to be one of those little cartoons. It was going to be a real feature that was animated. And there was a couple of things that he wanted to happen there. And that is, is that we wanted to have, he said, something that people would be emotional about. Not only just laughing, like gags, like you said, yeah. you know, gags, but somebody that would start to cry. You know, that this would be so well done and so realistic that they would feel the emotions. So in order to do this, he took steps to training his artists. For example, he brought in dancers, and he had dancers dance, and he had artists watch them on how their legs moved and how they bent over. Oh, like a, like a life drawing class. Right, right. Today, that's what people do, but you wouldn't think a cartoonist would do that because you're just doing little Felix the Cat or something like that, it's just bouncing around. Uh, he was well, yeah, especially Felix the Cat didn't have to be realistic looking because <laughs> well, uh, he real. was fighting a, a cylinder. <laughs> they, it seems like everything they drew was just for convenience sake. I know. A little round body for the cat, a little round head, and a cylinder. Well, wait a minute. You know, he did have a friend called Rock Bottom. Rock Bottom? Uh, that's was right. Was he a rock? Uh, well, he used to eat rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Why? 
<laughs> At least with Popeye, you had Jay Wimpy Wellington who ate hamburgers, and that makes sense. I guess so. I, I, this is why I think the way I think. You know, uh, this is the Cr- stuff I grew up with. Mad in madness. <laughs> So the papers were all over Disney because the Snow White thing was going way over budget. They had to go back to the bank four times. This really just out of control. This is the worst thing that a, a studio usually wants to ever see. Didn't they call it Disney's Folly? Yes, they did, and it had no dancers. <laughs> it was well, a Folly's Berger. Ex- that's funny. <laughs> Didn't they also say the same thing about whoever bought Alaska? Uh yeah, that was Stewart's icebox. Yeah, they 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 also <laughs> called uh they called it something's folly. Also. Oh, they okay. So anyway, it was uh it was a crazy thing going on then. But he was such a perfectionist, and he had this vision, this giant giant vision. And in order for him to make it work, he had to have the output exactly the way he wanted it. And he would really push people, and that was one of the balanced things that they did in this whole biography is that he really is a tough guy to work for sometimes. Oh, yeah. I've heard some horror stories. Yeah, so he you know, he really worked very, very hard and worked other people and expected them to spend all the hours that he did all the time working even though they have families. And Snow White was the big one. That was it. And it came out, and it was an amazing hit. And I remember what they said in the biography is that Clark Gable – and Carol Lombard, I guess that was his, his wife or girlfriend at the time, were in the front row crying when Snow White died. Oh, that's how good it was! You know that you have seasoned actors, legendary actors and mm-hmm. actresses, who are basically their emotions are being drawn out so much by this thing that's only done with pen and ink, and they felt it. And that's what Disney said: "Yes, that's what I want." Then the next one that came after that was Pinocchio. You remember Pinocchio? Oh, yeah. That was another terrifying movie. <laughs> that movie inspired a lot of terror. Turning into a donkey. Yeah, I know. by a whale. You know, I should have used that against you guys. You're going to turn into a donkey if you keep this up. <laughs> I never used that. That would have been good. Well, actually, being in the whale didn't seem so bad. No. Because he just went inside the whale and was just floating in a boat, and that yeah. was fine. Yeah, but you don't like fish. Dude. Oh, you like fish. I love fish. But Devin doesn't. Uh, Dad. Whales aren't fish. No, 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 but they eat fish. So it would be fish in the whale. Some oh, of them I guess Some so. of them eat fish. Not all. Some of the baleen yeah, whales don't. Baleen. So Orcas Pino- don't. Uh, yeah. They eat seals. Yeah, that's right. And so uh, Pinocchio, uh, when they were talking about this and in, in, in the animation of it, he jumped up and he said, we are not making cartoons. We are making art. And it showed. I mean, the, yeah. that was such a visually beautiful and at times haunting uh yeah i can still see in my mind the image of 